Hey everybody, Ryan here with the Guana Talk Audio. Today we're going to be doing a comparison between the Behringer X32 and X Air series of digital mixers. So I've talked a little bit about my Behringer digital mixers before. Um, as I said, I have a couple different ones. I have a full-size X32, I have an X32 core, um, I also have an X32 rack now, yay, um, as well as my XR18 X-Air digital mixer. The X32 and the X-Air lines of digital mixers are both great and they have a lot of strengths, but they do have some differences and possibly some different use cases, so I want to take uh, some time today and go through that. For the purposes of this comparison, I'm going to be looking at the XR18 from the X-Air series and then comparing that to the X32 platform as a whole. There are a few different X-Air mixers out there. I'm just going to go through a few of the differences right now. Um, so the XR12 obviously has 12 inputs, four of those being the Midas Design preamps. The XR16, again 16 inputs, eight of those being the Midas Design preamps. And then the XR18, 18 inputs, 16 of those being the preamps. Um, there is also the X18, which is very similar to the XR18, just a different physical form factor. That one's meant more to be uh, laid on a desk. For outputs, the XR12 has the XLR main left-right output and then two quarter-inch auxiliary outputs. XR16, again, uh, XLR main left-right output and then four XLR aux outputs. And then the XR18 has your XLR left-right and then six XLR aux outputs. For USB recording capability, the XR12 and the XR16 have a standard USB port on the front that you can put a USB stick into and do a two-track recording direct off the board. Um, there's no multi-track capability on either of those. The XR18 and the X18 have a 18x18 18 18 multi-track recording interface over USB to an external computer. Um, those do not, however, have a port for a USB stick to do a two-track recording. The XR12 and the XR16 do not have Behringer's Ultranet or P16 system. The XR18 and the X18 do have that, so you can use the P16M personal modern mixers um, or some of their Ultranet capable speakers. So that's just some of the quick spec differences between the XR ones. Again, for the rest of the comparison, I'm just going to be looking at the XR18. I think that's the fairest comparison against the X32 platform. All right, so spec comparison of the XR18 and the X32. Um, now these are gonna be at the platform level, not necessarily the hardware level. So for example, um, channel count, XR18, 18 channels. X32 is technically a 40 channel mixer, um, but you don't always have 40 physical inputs. Um, example, the X32 core has no physical inputs at all, but it's still a 40 channel mixer. For mix buses, the XR18 has six aux buses and then four dedicated effects buses. The X32 has 16 mix buses that can be assigned however you want. By default, four of those are going to be set up as effects sends, but they don't have to be. For matrix buses, the XR18 doesn't have any. The X32 has six that can be assigned however you want. For the main mix, the XR18 has your standard stereo left-right mix. The X32 has a left-right plus mono or center. That mono center channel on the X32 is separate from the main left-right level, can be adjusted independently or they can be linked. Um, it's very useful at times for setting up a subs bus. For effects processors, the XR18 has four effects slots. Those can be send return or inserts. The X32 has eight effects slots. Four of those are dedicated send return. Four of those are insert only. The send return can also be set up as inserts if you need to. Such as a quick numbers comparison between the two platforms, otherwise they have a lot of similarities. Both of them are using basically the same Midas Design mic preamps. They have the same list of available effects plugins. Both include the P16 or Ultranet audio networking system, great for use with the P16M personal monitors or some of the new Ultranet equipped speakers. Depending on your situation, you might be able to use the Ultranet or the P16 for a lot of your monitoring needs, and that will free up some of your aux buses for other uses. That can be particularly useful with the XR18, where you only have those six aux buses. Both platforms include your typical digital mixer fat channel control, so your low cut, parametric EQ, gate, compressor, all that stuff. 
and that's all controllable per each channel. Both platforms include a built-in RTA function, very useful for ringing out a room, checking feedback frequencies, or just getting a visual look at uh, the frequency spectrum for your mix. Both platforms include remote control capability from a tablet, laptop, or personal computer. Just about every major platform is supported for that. In fact, in the case of the XR18 and the X32 core, remote control is pretty much the only option you have available. So now some of the differences. The XR18 has a built-in tri-mode network module. So it has an Ethernet jack, it has a Wi-Fi access point, and then it also has Wi-Fi client. So what that means, you have an Ethernet jack that you can plug in directly to a laptop, or you can plug into your own router and then connect to that router for a network. You have the Wi-Fi access point where the XR18 actually broadcasts its own network and then you connect your tablet or your laptop to that. Or you have Wi-Fi client where the XR18 actually connects to an existing Wi-Fi network and any devices on that network can then communicate with the XR18. Having that functionality built in is a definite plus. Unfortunately, it doesn't work the best in all cases. The built-in Wi-Fi module utilizes a 2.4 GHz band which unfortunately is the most heavily used band out there, so there's a good chance you're gonna run into interference out in the field. One other issue to watch out for with that is if you have any digital wireless mics, a lot of those, particularly line six, operate in the 2.4 gigahertz band as well, and those will stomp all over your Wi-Fi and make it very difficult to connect or do anything. Personally, I use the built-in Wi-Fi module on the XR18 at home just for testing things out, um, but whenever I'm out in the field or on a job, I'm always plugging into an external router. The X32 only includes a dedicated Ethernet jack for remote control. There's no Wi-Fi built in at all, so you have to plug it into an external network or router. The X32 platform offers varying levels of physical control depending on your use case. For example, they have the full-size X32 with 16 faders for your inputs, 8 for your buses, and then your main left-right, um, and then you can bank through those. They have the compact and producer, which have eight faders on each side, and then your main left-right fader. You have the X32 rack, which has some controls on the front panel, and then you have the X32 core with very little physical control capability. On the X-Air side, and this goes for all the X-Air mixers, there's no physical control capability. Um, I mean, this is, this is it. It's just the stage box. The only physical dial on there is the volume control for the headphone output. So everything on the X-Air must be done from a remote device. The X32 has some extra routing capabilities that the X-Air doesn't have. One example there being output delays. So if you need to time align your PA to the band as a whole, or maybe you have a couple different rows of speakers, and you need to time align those to the main PA so everything arrives at the same time for your audience in the back, um, you can do that with the output delays. The X-Air can't do that. The biggest difference for me is that the XR18 is not expandable. On the X32 you have two AES50 ports that you can use to chain to another console. You can plug in external input boxes such as the SD8 or SD16 stage boxes. You can drop them down right where you need them so you don't have a cable mess all over the stage. These boxes can also act as your distribution points for the alternate or P16 system making those connections a lot easier as well. In addition to the stage box modules, you also have the rack mount S16 and S32, so you can put those in a rack on stage and then just run an AES50 cable out to front of house or wherever your mixer is. In addition to not having AES50, the XR18 does not have a card slot for any expansion. So by default, the card that's built into the X32 is a USB recording interface, very similar to what's in the XR18. However, that card can be swapped out if needed to provide extra functionality, such as MADI or Dante connectivity. So that expandability is really the biggest difference for me between the X32 and the XR18. The XR18 is a great little mixer. I love the form factor of this thing. You literally can just drop it down on stage, plug in everything, connect to an external router, and you're set to go. However, this is all you have. You can't plug in another stage box and get more inputs. You can't feed this digitally into another mixer to have this act as a stage box. This is its own self-contained, isolated digital mixer. And within those limits, it's really great. However, if I need extra flexibility, the X32 platform is where it's at. 
As I've said before, I've used X32 in a lot of different configurations, from standalone full-size X32 using the inputs on the back, to an X32 core feeding into S16s in a rack mount, from using an X32 rack connected with an S16, as well as an SD8 on the other side of the stage. And I've even used the X32 core with some creative routing to record a total of more than 32 channels between the core and the full-size X32. So again, I think the biggest difference is just flexibility. If I'm doing something small, where I know most of my inputs are going to be pretty much in the same place, and I'm not going to need more than 18, the XR18 is perfect. It's basically the same mic preamps, same internal processing, sounds the exact same. If I'm doing something a little more complicated and I need that extra layer of flexibility, the X32 platform is definitely the way to go. So to wrap up, both the XR18 and the X32 are great platforms. It really just depends on your use case. Do you need that extra flexibility? Does your setup use less than 18 channels? Do you need the option to expand to additional inputs and outputs down the road? Do you need a physical control interface with faders and knobs? Or are you fine using a remote device? Those are just some questions to think about if you're looking at buying one of these mixers. So hopefully that helped clarify some of the differences between the XR18 and the XR2 platforms. Again, I was mainly looking at just the XR18. If anyone's looking at an X Air mixer, I highly recommend you look at the XR18 as opposed to the other ones. You get that multi-track recording capability, you get the alternate output, more of the Midas Design mic preamps, more XLR aux outputs, and it's really not much bigger than the XR16 or the XR12. The X18 would also be fine. It's almost exactly the same feature set as the XR18. It's just a different physical form factor. Again, it's that desktop model. Um, I'm personally not a fan of that one, but for some people that works great. One difference there is the aux outputs are quarter inch instead of XLR. On the X32 side, it really just depends on what form factor you want, whether that's a full-size console or some rack mount units, a compact console. And of course, you can mix and match, add additional stage boxes, link different consoles together and route audio over AES50. And that extra level of flexibility can be really helpful. If you're curious about the platforms and want to learn a little more, I highly recommend downloading the remote control apps from Behringer um, and just play around with them. They all have demo modes so you can kind of see what functionality is in there. Just play around with some of the settings, some of the options, and just see what's available on both platforms. So again, I hope that helps. If you have any additional questions, please post them below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.